Uh, Jeff, if you could roll the tape, please. And we'll start tonight's meeting. First, welcome to everybody. This is the Committee of Infrastructure. And today is Thursday, January 27th, 2021, at 7 p.m. via teleconference. As chairman of the it's Committee Wednesday. of Infrastructure, I find that due to the state of emergency, emergency declared by the governor as a result of COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically, electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. To access Zoom, please refer to the agenda or the city's website for the meeting link. To join by phone, please dial 1-929-205-6099. The meeting ID is 853-6857-2906 with a passcode of 01059. The public may also view the meeting via channel 16. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting through public postings. Instructions have also been provided on, on the City of Nashua's website at www.nashuanehampshire.gov and publicly noticed at City Hall and the Nashua Public Library. If anyone has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 16, please call 603-821 2049 and they will help you to connect. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods uh, mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. So let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. Will each member state their presence? Please also state whether there's anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which if we required under the right to no law. I'll call the clerk, Alderman Schmidt, to please call the roll. I certainly will, sir. Alderman at large, Michael O'Brien, Sr. I am present, I am alone, and I can hear the proceedings. Alderman Thomas Lopez. I am present, I'm alone, I can hear the proceedings, and I apologize for shouting, I was trying to correct the date before you got too far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Jan Schmidt is here and alone in the room. Alderman Ernest Jetty. I'm here alone and I can hear the proceedings. And Alderman David C. Tenza. I am present, I'm alone and I can hear everyone. That would be five members in attendance, Mr. Chairman. Very good, welcome all. All right, uh, at this particular point in time, I will open the meeting to uh, public comment. I don't see anybody, but however, if you're out there, uh, make yourself known. Seeing none, we'll move on to discussion. And uh, this evening for a special treat and to get the, uh, to assist them in getting the information out, I welcome uh, uh, Director Tim Cummings has got to discuss the barriers on Main Street. I know several of you have a question. Uh, so therefore too, and, and if also too, before I get too far ahead, uh, the clerk can recognize Director Cummings here and Director Dan Hudson is also in attendance with us too. Okay, so thank you. Without further ado, I'll turn the meeting to uh, Director Cummings. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and through you to the committee. My name is Tim Cummings, Director of Economic Development and I wanted to join you this evening to just have a brief discussion about the, the barriers and in particular outdoor dining. Um, as um, I know that this is uh, an issue that is uh, near and dear to a lot of folks, including myself. Um, so I thought it would be good just to kind of give everyone a brief 
update as to where where the various elements of this project are are at um and and of course happy to to take any questions um hopefully we can keep this rather informal um mr chair if it's if it's your pleasure and okay with you we'll just if questions arise we'll take them as they come but um i'm just gonna you know talk through uh basically uh the highlights of of um what we've been acting and doing over the last few months since uh, the last time I was before you, which was, I would say, early December when this conversation was uh, was last brought up. So, um, if you recall, we we late last fall, uh, early winter, you know, outreach to the public to ask what their opinion were, you know, may have been on the aesthetics of the particular barriers. We know last year, the biggest feedback we got from folks was that they did not care for the aesthetics of the, of the barriers. And understandably so at that time, we didn't own the barriers. So we couldn't really do much with it to, for, from a beautification standpoint. But um, we, we tested out a couple different barriers. Um, uh, we um, looked at, um, some more aesthetically pleasing type barriers, but they weren't as durable. And then we looked at a different type of concrete barrier that was much more durable, but um, fell a little short on the aesthetics. You know, the overall input and consensus that we got, and we didn't do anything official. We we surveyed, we we outreached to various groups, we solicited input, and you know, it was a mixed bag. There wasn't uh, much consensus i think actually more people were leaning more towards the concrete barriers on main street than what was put out on pearl street um but ultimately um there wasn't an overwhelming i would suggest suggest um uh, interest or or desire to pursue either one of the barriers um that happened to work out very nicely because coincidentally enough um, we were able to work out a deal with the vendor who uh, let us rent the barriers last year. And so we were able to procure the barriers that we used last year at a very steep discount. Uh, I want to say something like $20,000, $25,000 for 2,100 linear feet or, or thereabouts of, of barriers. So um, we got a substantial discount on that. So that, that helped. Um, and now that we own the barriers, um, we can actually, uh, beautiful, you know, do some beautification, add art, add, add different type of beautification elements that, that, the you know, that the community so desires. So, um, we have a lot more barriers than we originally anticipated, um, because of the, of the price, um, that we were able to get for, um, for, for the barriers, because originally we, either barrier we were looking at was going to be much more, um, expensive and, 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 and so it turned out to be a win-win all, all the way around. We, we were able to act on that. So, um, we escrowed $200,000, um, which that money is still available. We're going to need to use that money to um, put the barriers down. You know, the cost of that is probably going to be for the for a round trip dropping and pickup is probably somewhere in the range of about sixty thousand dollars. So we're going to need to to use some of that two hundred thousand for that, and then that uh, remainder that say for this conversation. And this is rough estimates. Please don't hold me to any of this, but it gives you a ballpark order of magnitude of what we're talking about. We could, um, you know, use the you know 140,000 that's left over in various ways, and I would suggest, you know, we would want to maybe you do some beautification and maybe an art project or or something to that effect with the with some of the money. By no means all of the money that's 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 left in the in the in the escrowed money. Um, we were originally looking at. Um, laying the barriers uh, in a more condensed location just because we knew we were going to have to prioritize um we couldn't afford the you know the 12 uh the the 2400 linear feet um so now that we have 2100 plus a few extra uh 100 linear feet from previous purchases we can we can get more towards what we were looking to do 
um, last year and not have to prioritize as, as I thought we might have to. Um, so we will be looking to, to follow pretty much the same plan that, um, that we, you know, pursued um, last year. So I'm just going to look at my emails here and see if I can find it. And Mr. Chair, if you don't mind, um, if I could pull up my screen, I can go over the map. Um, Absolutely. Uh, you're on your own. My technical savvy ain't there. So hopefully you have a share screen or capability. Yep. You're all yes. set. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Yep. Thanks, Jeff. So, um, so I'm just going to share my screen here. Bear with me. And I'll pull this down as soon as I can, because I know it's, it's better to be able to talk uh, to folks. So, um, so just, I'm going to start back up here as a reminder. So, you know, we'll look at, um, We'll look at doing something in through here, something similar to what you see here in terms of barriers. Um, this isn't as high of a priority, so you know we know that we can we can set this uh, up later on if necessary and tweak it as time comes. So this is though um, um, not the main thrust of what we'll what we'll be looking to do. Uh, we really want to focus our efforts along Main Street here. Peddler's daughter. Um, this is something that I'm not suggesting we make any changes right now, but I do want to let folks know that um, Riverside Barbecue was recently purchased by a restaurant group out of Haverhill, Massachusetts, um, looking to come in here. So there may be a conversation we have, depending on what their business plan and their timeline may be in terms yeah, of. Have, if, I'm sorry, you have the wrong spot on there for that oh sorry thanks that's right here sorry Th thanks thanks alderman clements uh so riverside barbecue is right here um and i'll note that we don't have any barriers uh but we um may need to do something there at some point and so i just flagged that for you as an fyi i'm not suggesting we do anything now um keeping everything the way it was before. We tweaked this area right in here and we'll, we'll continue to do that again so folks can make the right on Water Street. Continuing on down through here. Again, not changing anything through here, keeping it pretty much the same as we did last time around. Tim, Tim could I interrupt you? Um, yeah, please. So um, at that intersection there, that Water Street, uh, Main Street, Water Street, um, Park Street, and uh, Pearson Avenue area. Yep. So, um, so if you, if you noticed, you've, you've uh, you know, last year we had a we had some uh, barriers in front of uh, Ameriprise Financial. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so it was. It was pointed out to me that as uh, people were heading north on Main Street, uh, when they got to that uh, intersection, there was um, um, a lot of uh, congestion caused because um, you know, people trying to um, go north and uh, you know, through that intersection and taking a right on Pearson Street, um, you know, they, were they were funneled over into that, you know, so because of the barriers, they're funneled over into the, the, uh, the left-hand the left northbound lane. And so you had, uh, you know, you, you get a lot of traffic, you know, for, uh, you know, you've got barriers on the bridge and in front of Peddler's Daughter. So there's just one lane there. Um, and uh, 
in, in, be, because of the, uh, the barriers in front of Ameriprise, you're beginning the one lane uh, right at the intersection. And so, tra uh, so you've got you know, traffic coming north. Um, you know, and because of the way the lights work, you know, people trying to um, you know, cross that intersection uh, to go north, the, you know, there was a lot of, uh, in many times it was back up there. And so people would end up, you know, straddling the intersection. And so, you know, people coming out of Park Street couldn't come on to Main Street. Um, and, my, you know, I, I'm just suggesting that the elimination of those barriers in front of Ameriprise, which I, I think served no purpose other than to begin the funnel um, if you could eliminate that, that would give a little more room for cars coming across the intersection to kind of either go on to Pearson Street or, um, you know, kind of a staging area to get, you know, to go further north across the bridge. It would, it would give them a little more room and allow, you know, um, I understand. Maybe, maybe avoid some of the congestion at the intersection of, uh, Sure. Park in Maine. Sure, I understand, uh, Alderman Jetty. I mean, I, I guess um, we can study it. We can look at it. Uh, I think when you suggest that the barrier serves no purpose other than to start the funneling, I would just point out that that's probably one of the main thrusts of why it, it was designed the way it was was to create a pinch point uh, to start that funneling. Um, you know, I hear you. Your point's well taken. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, do, do, can we do it differently? Can we look at, you know, trying to create some more capacity there? And we'll, we'll look at that. Um, uh, you know, ultimately, I just want to, I don't want to necessarily drill down on this point too much for this specific issue, but I just want to remind everyone that, you know, the, the, that the more we whittle away at these barriers, a little here, a little there, can we tweak this there and take away the capacity, you know, you're going to have the opposite effect of creating that congestion, which is really what you should be striving for. I mean, last year, uh, you know, I, I was very, you know, strong that I thought the Water Street intersection worked without creating that additional capacity. Folks wanted to do it. We, we did it, um, you know, so we'll, we'll look at this again. Um, but I just, I just want to, you know, remind folks that, you know, a, a little here, a little there, you know, sooner or later, you're going to lose the original intent of what we're trying, what we're trying to do here. So um, that's an overall comment that just is spurred by this particular issue. Um, because, uh, and Alderman Jetty raises the first of what I can tell you, I've been approached by many people over the last four months in terms of, hey, can we, you know, the best, most recent one I got was, you know, can we remove some barriers here uh, for the exact same reasons that, that Alderman Jetty uh, just, just suggested is because, you know, it doesn't really serve any purpose. There's no real restaurants right here. There's no outdoor dining per se, but what it does do is it starts that funneling effect um, and creates the, the narrowing of, of Main Street, creating that road diet condition, which slows the cars down. Um, and, 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 that's you know uh, one of the byproducts that we really want to strive to try to to maintain. So, um, Director Cummings, if I may, yes, sir. Okay, uh, last year we had the conversation with this, and it's timely now with Alderman Jetty's point. <clears throat> but last year when we had the barriers up, we kind of left the uh, traffic lights, those devices alone. Are we going to look at them this year if the infrastructure is modern enough that we can adjust the changes, would that be part of things to, uh, in, we don't want to increase the speed of Main Street, we want to be able to move traffic efficiently on Main Street. So will we be looking at the traffic devices to assist us with that? I will speak to DPW on that. I know that that is something that was raised last year and you're absolutely right, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it was discussed that one of the ways we could manage and control this better 
was by changing the timings of the lights. My understanding was that that was a little cost prohibitive last year, and we weren't sure if we were ever going to do it again. So we didn't want to necessarily make that change, but you raise a good point. It's probably something we should, should look at and study further if we're going to continue doing this. And that's a question I have for this group and for others is, you know, are we going to be doing this, you know, semi-regularly, semi-permanently? I, I definitely understand we're doing it now for the pandemic here um, that's continuing that I don't think any of us saw this continuing as long as it is. But then the question is going to arise, are we going to be doing this the following summer, the following summer and, and so forth? And, and, and I think, you know, developing, to your point, a longer term, even medium sized plan, long term plan, not a whole out uh, infrastructure upgrade, you know, is probably worth a conversation. Um, I will speak to DPW uh, on that specific point and get back to the to get back to you and others. Uh, on that. Uh, Director Cummings? Yes. Uh, first, if we do end up not doing this next year, I would like to claim all the barriers so I can make a giant maze. Um, but those little areas where we have uh, like their traffic control areas, but there's actually space behind them. Um, some of those are reasonably sized. Have we thought about maybe leasing that out to, you know, vendors who might set up and take down during the day? Uh, I'm going to scroll in, Alderman Lopez. Could you just point to me where you're kind of talking about? I mean, the one that we were talking about was a good example, but there's also one, um, I think, a little bit north of here, because that looks like it's uh, Tostaos. Mm. I'm completely lost. This is further up. Okay. I'm looking for an orphan one here. Uh, yeah, just go back to the one that Alderman Jetty was looking at, because I think it is big enough. Some of them are bigger, too. Um, right here, actually, on your left. So some of those are not really in front of um, restaurants. That's right. in front of Daryl's. You could put like a little pop-up magazine stand or hot dog vendor or something like that. I'd, sorry, I just heard public health like sit up, but That's whatever right. it is would be subject to obviously regulation. But um, we, if we make that available, that might give some people who were kind of laying low during COVID because of the nature of their business an opportunity to, to get a visible spot and it, it could generate a little revenue. You raise a really good point, Alderman Lopez. I, I, I think based on market demand, I'm not sure if there is any, but uh, get, but but you you you're yes. Can we utilize this space in a better way? Um, I don't have, I don't know. Um, I think getting electricity and some of the fundamental infrastructure out there may be a little challenging. Um, you know, so we would have to kind of look at that. Um, maybe there is electricity there, um, but I, we would have to kind of investigate some of those more technical details. It might not be every single one of these sites. I think um, out in front of um, the, the former, um, I think it's 147 Main Street. It's the former law Yeah, there's office. a big one there that I've seen people like hanging out at anyway. Yeah, so you you know, I think that's like right here, this area right here. Yep. Um, you, yes, could we look to activate that space in some way that's safe? Um, it's a really good point. We should we should look at that. So I will again, I will I will further further look into that a little bit more and see what we might be able to do there. Well, if I'm on a roll, it might be something you want to run by the Downtown Improvement Committee and Great American Downtown because. Whoever is running the business in front of that is obviously going to be like, so who are you putting in front of me? Um, and then the other thing is, GAD has been nothing if not creative. So they might be able to actually program stuff in there or do the marketing. Yep, agreed. No, it's a good, it's a good thought that we should, we should explore further. And some of those, as you said, dead spots uh, that do that are necessary just because they're dead spots because they don't have necessarily a restaurant in front of it. It does serve a purpose. Um, so we should look at maybe activating them in some way. Um, just continuing on here, I, I, I think we kind of went through this section here. Um, Mr. Chairman, can I? Um... Yes, Alderman uh, Clemens, yes. Thank you. I, I did have a question um, to Director Cummings, and, and that was, 
and it, and it brought up, it was back to what Alderman, um, sort of what we were talking about at Dead Spaces. I know that um, some of the areas weren't used really as much as they, as much as others. Are we engaging in to businesses and restaurants this year um, before we put these up to see, is this something you really want? Because I'm thinking of, um, I'm thinking of down near um, uh, the pizza place. Expresso's like, Pizza. Espresso's I was, pizza didn't really I was there it. yesterday and I, and I had this conversation for the, for the point that you're raising, Alderman Clemens. You're absolutely yep. right. Uh, and he committed to me yesterday because I said to him, if barriers go out, are you going to put any tables out there? Are you going to take advantage of outdoor dining? And he said to me yesterday, absolutely, yes. I am okay. going to put outdoor dining. I'm going to put the tables out there. Uh, okay. And then he said, and then he said to me, which I thought was an interesting point, and I didn't, I didn't necessarily think about it because I too was kind of think coming at it the same way, which was, wow, you know, we, we did this and I didn't really see that space getting used. Um, I thought maybe, you know, it, you know, it could have been used better by, by, by the operator, but he made a really good point, which was just because Main Street was as active as it was, and it was, you know, as, as vibrant as it was, he was getting a lot of people coming into his restaurant, getting a slice of pizza and continuing on with their, with their, with their night. Um, and so he was, as he said, he was very thankful for having the outdoor dining set up as it was last year, just the way it was. Um, and he said to me that he really needs it again, because this last three weeks have been the hardest three weeks, um, that he's had thus far. And he said this because we did the outdoor dining, it saved him last summer. That, and that's totally fine. And, you know, to the business owner that wants it in front of their restaurant again, absolutely 100%. I'm behind that. I just wasn't sure if you had had the conversation yet, um, because certainly if we could have added, you know, more parking or maybe uh, maybe instead of that, because it's a pizza place, people might have wanted a, um, a 15 minute area there. Um, so no, I'm glad you had the conversation. Um, hopefully, you know, um, the only other thing that I would mention is I don't know what the schedule scheduled opening is for the Riverside, uh, where Riverside Barbecue used to be, and also where um, uh, I'm, I'm aging myself. Tim, where, where, t uh, timber grill, timber grill. Timber grill used to be. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know, so, if they're, if they're going to be opening, cause I, I would imagine that those two places would be someplace where we would add barriers. You're, you're absolutely right. So, uh, so I flagged the, the Riverside barbecue issue, which I don't have a clear answer on that yet. It's something I'm monitoring. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a good answer there. I don't, I don't know. But what I can tell you is Timber Grill, I have spoken to Mr. Gleason uh, just before uh, Christmas. They are looking to open um, sometime soon and they do want to take advantage of the outdoor dining. So to your point, uh, something that we're going to have to entertain and I flagged this internally with some, with, with city folks already is, you know, Timber Grill is here. So we're going to have to think about possibly doing something because they have requested outdoor dining on, on, on that uh, factory street. So um, more to come as it comes together, but your point's well taken. We are monitoring it and trying to work with the restaurants. Um, so, Director Cummings, uh, Alderman Jetty here. Yep. So uh, it, it, uh, the name of the place is Tail Spinner, not... Uh, it used to be Timber Grill, but it's going to be called Tail Spinner. Yeah. And it's uh, it's not where you indicated. It's it's further west. It's right around here, right? Um, yeah. It's not there, but it's to yeah. the west of that. that. Kind of... Here? There you go, right there. Yeah, it's in this area, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Director Cummings, um, 
just a couple things. Were you looking this evening to find out if the committee was still interested in having the barriers up, redesigning how the barriers are being put out, or looking for ways to enhance it? From my personal perspective, I think that we ought to be looking at a minimum of two or three years of having these out there to give the businesses a chance to recoup some of their losses. Two, I think that a lot of communities now have decided to do this permanently because people like it and like eating outside. And um, and I guess the other thing that uh, just throw out there now and you might come up later is you might want to, have, we have a lot of artists in Nashua. Maybe you want to have an art contest to decorate some of these things, or at least have the restaurants be able to paint them a certain color. And I think a lot of places like in Boston, because of the tra traffic and people talk about not wanting to be near the cars, they allow them to put, you know, plants or something on top of the barriers to make, so you really can't see the diners from the cars. So just throw that out there. I know I appreciate all those comments, uh, uh, Alderman Dowd. Um, tonight, I'm really just looking to continue the conversation. I mean, yes, any comment, any suggestion, any 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 observation is more than welcomed. Um, you know, and, and I'm looking for that input. Um, ultimately, I mean, based off of past conversations with this group and others, it's been made clear to me that folks want to continue in this direction. So. I'm working to get legislation filed for the next Board of Aldermen meeting that will kind of mirror this plan and, you know, go through the Board of Aldermen process and we can tweak it um, as necessary before it's finalized. But um, something I haven't brought up that I just, you know, I, I apologize. I meant to make this a talking point when I first started. Um, but with, you know, outdoor dining, we're looking to start on March 15th. Right. And that's going to be coming up around the corner. So we really need to finalize this now because, you know, um, a good example is I, I know, um, and I, I want to preface my comments by saying I want every single restaurant operator to follow all the best safety protocols out there. And I believe they will. We have some great groups um, and, and they will adhere to the social distancing and the public health uh, recommendations and, and, and regulations. But you have St. Patrick's Day coming up. And uh, we really want to make sure that because that's a big revenue source for some of these businesses. Um, so we want to make sure that we ha have this in place by March 15th. Um, so to that end, I think we'll be looking to lay some of the barriers, you know, with that in mind. So we, we get we get the, uh, the the restaurants that have a strong St. Patrick's Day, you know, attendance um, up and running as best they can under the proper conditions. Um, and then again, closing out, when would we be looking to pick up the barriers? That would be uh, a November 15th timeframe. So uh, March 15th to November 15th. Um, of course, we could always extend it uh, longer if, if folks desire, you know, a, a couple weeks or so. Um, but we really want to make sure that we get the, the barriers up before the snow falls. And so I think a November 15th, right before Thanksgiving is a good, a good time frame. What if, um, what if there's still snow March 15th? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I will have to work with DPW to, to, to work through that. I mean, ultimately, we're going to have to hire a third-party vendor to put these barriers back down. It, once DPW gives the okay for that, that's when the barriers will go down. Um, I, the legislation is going to read just something like, so we have the ability to do it post March 15th. Um, okay. And I'm, and I'm really hoping we don't have snow on the ground. Um, um, Director Cummings? Yes. Not to yes. Add a whole logistics thing to this because it's been talked about a couple of different times, but uh, just some comments regarding having artists decorate these. Um, we probably want to think about whether or not we can have them paint them before they're put out just so that there aren't artists like in the street. Um, so <laughs> oh, you already have. Okay. Uh, I was yeah, going to so, make a recommendation, but if uh, you already have thoughts on that. <laughs> so we've been studying this. And so I have a couple, I have a couple points on that front. Um, first and foremost, depending on the paint and the material, my understanding on the concrete barrier that we'll be using in a good mural art paint, you really need to paint these in a May type timeframe and you need to have 50 degree weather. So 
there won't be anything really done uh, if we do anything, I should say, but I'm assuming we will do something. So under that assumption, it's really going to be May before we do it. And uh, Alderman Lopez, you're absolutely right. Um, the, the barriers being put down, that's really going to cause an issue. Painting, you can't really take up much more um, capacity on Main Street. So we're actually going to have, we, we're actually going to have to have a conversation about doing it at night um, or doing something during off hours when it's not going to affect people. Um, we've had conversations with art groups expressing these types of concerns to feel them out, uh, to get a sense as to where they're at. Um, ultimately, um, what I would recommend is, you know, we put out an RFP um, to all artist groups that have an interest. Um, and then um, I will not be the arbiter of who decides for the record. Uh, but we would, we would put a call out for, for arts groups to, to submit to us a proposal. Um, and then we ultimately would uh, pr probably select two, three, four, whatever folks want to do that's reasonable um, and, and execute uh, all, along those lines with the constraints that, that I just talked about. So my takeaway, first of all, is it's got to be May, and I'm not letting that pass. Um, and then the second thing is um, I was actually leading up to like having them painting in the street was potentially dangerous, unless you tried to pair it with the mayor's plan and positive street arts plan to have an art festival, because both organizations or both were trying towards that goal last year. I know the mayor had contacted Beyond Walls, positive street art was trying to celebrate their anniversary and had one. So you could potentially just do it in a day, like as a planned event, because um, I mean, a lot of those, uh, the main areas are right between the area that is usually shut down for farmer's market. Um, so there's a, a direction plan for that. And then you could figure out how to work around it as well. So, I mean, May's maybe a little bit early to have any kind of gatherings, especially with COVID-19 still looming around, but um, it just food for thought that another way to go would be to have an art festival. Yeah, no, it's a great suggestion. Absolutely. And we, you know, that's, I'll, I'll, I'll make a point to raise that. I do know that to your point, everyone's talking about a mural festival. They would love to see a mural festival. If we're able to incorporate in, that would be great. This is like uh, a third of a mural festival because it's knee height. So, you know, just, just rough numbers. My understanding is a thousand linear feet will take about two weeks to, to do is what we've been, you know, again, what we've been told is, you know, roughly, you know, and I'm not suggesting we do uh, a certain amount. I think, you know, we might look to do, depending on, you know, how much we want to spend and what we want to do, you know, probably maybe 1500, maybe 500, 500, 500. I, I don't know, you know, but, and then we're going to have to look at how we want to kind of chunk that out, make sure we get the same aesthetic uh, look on the, on the east and west sides, um, making sure we take into consideration what some of these uh, businesses want in front of their restaurants. So there's, there's gonna be a lot to this, um, but it's definitely something that I think folks would welcome and wanna see. And I think, you know, we'll work, once we get the barriers down, that will be the next thing that we work on because, you know, we do own them this year. Uh, it might be helpful to look at um, the live wall, which is constantly changing uh, on the side of the uh, rail trail. It's on the back of uh, where Maine and Lesser keeps their tires, the old Chinese restaurant. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of different mural groups. And one of the reasons that that thing changes so often is because teams are coming in and like a lot of them. So while it would take a, a group, uh, you know, two weeks to do that much time, I mean, there's a lot to be said for bringing in a lot of people. Agreed. Yeah, that's one of the ways we could structure it. Um, just moving on here. So we talked about the former timber grill over here. I do want to just note that um, we got a request. So this restaurant over here, right in, I should say it's this restaurant right in here, didn't really take advantage of outdoor dining last year. Um, they would like to, this is going to cause an issue in terms of how we reconcile it. They would like to see outdoor dining out here. It's going to be really tough. West Pearl Street is really tough to accommodate it for multiple reasons. Um, the, the biggest one is the turning radiuses through here makes it difficult. We have the Performing Arts Center, which will be going under construction. 
Um, you know, so, uh, so, so I, I, you know, we're going to do the best we can to accommodate the outdoor dining may end up being back out through here again. We did that at the end of, of the season last year. We'll probably look to do that again. Um, I will tell you just so folks know the request was for something closer to main street. Um, so you, if you came out of their door, you'd make a left towards main street for the outdoor dining and not a right. I just, we have a lot going on. I don't know if we're going to be able to do everything. So um, we're still working through that. I just wanted to kind of raise that as an issue. So folks, if you hear about it, you're not, you're not surprised. Um, it's a little outside the box, but it's just something that, that folks should be aware of is um, so and it's a conversation to be had that I want to raise to the group. So Palm Street, I believe this is Palm, this is Pine. I believe this is Palm Street right here. I don't, I don't have no, it. Pine Street's over to the left, like by three. One next to Pine. This one? Yep. And so this one, so back. It's not without all the fireworks. Yeah, back in through here. I'm not exactly sure where. I'd have to go back and study it. Um, we got a request recently um, that we consider doing outdoor dining in through I here. The when, Pine Street Eatery? Was it no, the not the Pine Street Eatery. Eatery. Um, Roland's? No, that's over there. It's a it's a Latin restaurant in this area. It might be. It's at the corner. Oh yeah, I know what uh, you're talking about. I can't think of the name right now. But but they, they won best price on the rock two years in a row. <laughs> they recently raised the question of, hey, can we have outdoor dining here? They're not in the downtown, and I and I wouldn't suggest that we would be, you know, wanting to preclude them. I think they're a very well established, respectable neighborhood group that we should be looking to help. But um, I raise it as only like, you know, we do have some of these restaurants and some of these operators outside of the traditional Main Street. If I'm not hearing any major pushback, I do think, you know, it's a conversation that we should have about, you know, allowing for outdoor dining in those areas, which means we would have to put up the barriers. Um, and it means, you know, in this particular area, when we looked at it quickly the other day, uh, looks like there's like a, a through lane and a turn lane, and we would, would probably have to, you know, reduce a turn lane. Um, and so you'd, you'd, you know, if the queuing worked and this all needs to be studied by DPW engineering, um, we would look to to possibly accommodate it um, if 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 the if the uh, you know if if the infrastructure allowed for it. But I just wanted to raise it as an issue because it's outside of the traditional area that we've always talked about. So there is a um, lot in West Hollis. They always feel like they're a little separated from whatever's going on on Main Street, and I mean that's a very difficult road to to easily look at. But I mean it would be nice for them to at least be able to ask <laughs> and see if it's feasible. And so um, you raised the next, yep, so Alderman Lopez, you're absolutely right. So, you know, the, the other area is right in through here where we are getting requests and and we understand, I mean, West, I mean, I guess in through here as well, but I mean, the requests came through here that, you know, East and West Hollow Street are very tight areas. It's it's very hard. There's very small sidewalk. It's, it's a safety issue that gets raised, but uh, you know, it's definitely depending on the particular site. I think it's worth a conversation and we should study it and not just say no right off the bat. Um, I know that we're hearing from some of these groups. So it's definitely something that we can, we can continue to, to, to look at. Um, similarly with, um, uh, we added it at the end of uh, last year, right here. Um, so this was a new restaurant that, that came in um, it's an Irish restaurant, and so we put some barriers up right here. Um, Casey McKee. And that, yes, and that wasn't that wasn't part of our original May rollout. We did that in like I want to say August or or July, end of July. So um, those are kind of the updates that I wanted to give you in terms of the tweaks in the map since the last time that we were around. Um, I'm going to pull this down now. I can bring uh, before it before you completely leave. Uh, is, have you heard anything about Sub-Zero going in on Factory Street? I've, I know, I've heard that they've signed a lease and that they're going in, but I have not heard from them in terms of outdoor dining. 
Okay, so I, I forwarded a request regarding, um, they were looking for handicap parking. Um, I think I sent that to Jill, um, but it might also be a good idea to make sure they know that this is even being considered. If it's gonna be something they're looking for and we're doing it next door at the, um, uh, the Gleason's place, then we might wanna figure out how to coordinate them. Yeah, agreed. I will, I will reach out and, and, and facilitate that, see if there's anything that we could do. Okay. Mr. Thank Jim, you. May I just offer a couple of comments? Absolutely. Uh, Autumn and Lowe. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to offer a couple of comments I had while I was listening. Um, where I live, um, frequently I have to go through downtown to get, uh, I, I frequently go somewhere down on off Canal Street. So, and I live close to town on, in, on the south end. And the only way to get there is through town, more or less. Um, and the traffic was really, many people that I spoke with had a really hard time with traffic last summer. And I just feel that um, maybe there's a reason why, but I feel that as you're going north on any street that you can take a right, that you um, stop the uh, stop the barriers a hundred feet before you get to that right to allow for right turn uh, you know flow, and then coming south, any uh, rights that you can um, take that you also stop the barrier hundred feet before you get there. I think it would make a big difference in flow and. At between four and five, it's really tough. Um, so can I, so so can I comment on that? Mm -hmm. So, so um, th if that's your pleasure, if that's your desire, I mean that's 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 you know a value that you hold. That you know I I can't argue that. I mean I I understand. What I can tell you is, from an urban planning perspective and in a, the downtown, what you're what you just articulated and suggested is. Um, yielding to an auto-centric mindset and not creating a pedestrian-friendly condition. So the question is, is do you want to yield to the pedestrian or do you want to yield your policy to, to the automobile? And yes, the, out, the flow would be much better in that regard and you would have less congestion and you'd have, you'd have more capacity. No, understood. You're also going to make it um, not as safe for people who are walking in the downtown to walk. And, and, and that is the trade-off. And the question that arises, what type of urban built environment condition are you looking for? Um, and oftentimes in a downtown, you'll yield to the pedestrian and you try not to have, you wanna to try to limit as much as possible your turning lanes. You don't want to have that extra capacity because you want you don't want to create that mindset where cars speed up to turn to make the right to beat the light uh, type type of mindset. So um, that's just what the the, the 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 philosophy is. You know, at the end of the day, uh, lots of downtowns go in the direction that you're suggesting. Okay, um, my my thoughts are we have a lot of um, crosswalks in downtown, but um, the other thing I wanted to just mention is as far as painting the um, barriers, I just wonder if, um, I'm wondering if we, I'm gr great with painting the barriers that are uh, at a diagonal, but I'm afraid, I wonder if any thought was given to, if we have a lot of interesting artwork along the side that as people drive by and they start looking and then, you know, it's a distraction. Um, but the bear, uh, rather the diagonals, uh, would be fine because any driver can see, you know, can see it as they're driving toward it. Um, yep. You, yep. Understood. It's a good, it's a good point. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so director Cummings, just on a couple points, I, I want to echo something that, uh, Alderman Lopez said earlier about, bringing in uh, other vendors downtown to, to fill the space and not only necessarily where the, where the barriers will be on the street, but, uh, you know, maybe some other locations we have uh, downtown. I think that's a great idea to maybe draw a crowd or different people down there on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. I don't think it has to be 
um, every, every day. Uh, but I, I think that's a, you know, I'm sure National Area Artists Association probably have some folks who would love to be selling art uh, throughout the summer. Um, we brought people downtown and, you know, who, who may not otherwise go down there. Um, as far as the other streets, if, if there are, if the, if the fire department and street department uh, are okay with uh, barriers in other locations along West Hollis, I say, uh, you know, we should, we should give it a try um, to, to help those restaurants out. I think those areas are obviously a little bit, um, the streets are narrower, so maybe more difficult. Um, but if, uh, if you're looking for our input on that, um, you know, I would say absolutely, as long as it can be done in a, in a safe manner. Um, and then finally, I would hope, you know, that we are towards the end of the summer are going to be looking towards the end of this pandemic. Um, you know, and so one of the things I would love to see, and I know it's been done before, um, from, um, from Pearl Street, shut down from Pearl Street to Temple, Pearl to Factory there for music festivals. Um, I, I would love to see some, you know, later in the summer, some kind of event. And I think it's probably Gad who puts it on and not, not your office, but in conjunction with your office, um, you know, some type of celebration almost of downtown or, or late summer fest uh, so that, you know, it's a, um, I don't think we're, they're going to do the, the brew fest this year, but but something similar to that, where there's a, a section uh, of of the main street that's shut off from traffic, so people almost like a almost like a beer garden type style type thing, which um, you know again it would just be you know kind of a not culmination, but you know another way to support those businesses, get people down there, um, and you know really take advantage of of the investment that the city's made in in these barriers. Thanks. Okay. That's a great point. I will, I will discuss that with Great American Downtown and see what we might be able to do. I, I wholeheartedly understand what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one thing we don't want to do with the uh, barriers is have any kind of advertising or social uh, group names on them because that would just cause us some issues. I think it should be art real art, not uh, anything that could get us in trouble. I understand what you're saying. We will make sure that we'll make sure that there's some guidelines on there, but you know, I, I am also not going to be the arbiter of what's art and not art, but you, you do make a point that I just want to make sure I, I, I'm correct in understanding is um, I've also had some of the businesses suggest that maybe they would like to have signs in front of these barriers. Um, you know, I, I, I think that that might run afoul to our, our land use regulations. Um, but I, I applaud their effort uh, to further advertise their businesses. Um, so I think we'll probably try to steer away from that type of marketing uh, and advertisement as well on those barriers. Yeah, I would steer that question to Director Marshan and uh, BPW. Uh, for those kind of decisions. But yeah. Very entrepreneurial of some of these operators. I give them credit. Yeah, if I could just add, though, that uh, I've seen billboard space on uh, barriers, and it does not look as good as people think it will. That's also exactly the kind of distraction that uh, Alderman Lou would be worried, at, worried about. If there were murals that were intended to be looked at at ground level, they wouldn't necessarily catch the eye. But if you see like a big Coca-Cola sign, you're, you've been programmed since birth to look at those things. So I would be a little bit hesitant about that. Um, and it might be a good idea to make sure that you come up with guidelines well before um, announcing to anybody, just so there aren't any false expectations. Yes, good point. Thank you. And if I may re, uh, remind the board, if you think back, <clears throat> when we uh, worked to get umbrellas down on Main Street, we had to remove them from the sign ordinance. We do have that. So I think that would encompass some of the advertising concerns that you have. Is, uh, I don't have it off the top of my head, but to let you know, there is an ordinance that does incorporate signage. And uh, so maybe you might want to take a look at that as well. Well, and to that point, anybody who wants to advertise on one of those has to insure the barrier for $2 million. So good well, luck, guys. 
Well, I'm just raising it because I'm, I, if you're approached by an, an operator who says, I'd like to do this, I just, I want to get ahead of it, mm-hmm. you know, um, because I could only suspect that, you know, when, when city staff says, no, that really doesn't follow our policy, there we have concerns about this, I know that they're going to reach right out and say, you know, we would like this. And, and if you, there's concerns, there's legitimate concerns as to why we, why we, um, we can raise out those empty my, ones. my son is here. He's going to bed. He's going to say good night to everyone. Say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right. I he good. looks just like you. Same amount of hair. We have to <laughs> take a recess here. Yeah, buddy. No, no. <laughs> night, night. Sorry about that. So he was just saying good night to me. Um, no, so, I want a cookie before he goes to bed. Uh, did I get you in trouble there? <laughs> He, he, he got a sugar cookie before bed. He made sugar cookies this night. So that's, 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 a, that's fun. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so that's the only reason why I was raising the issue um, is I, I could foresee it coming down the pike. Uh, I have a question regarding the amount that you said may or may not, that we are not absolutely holding you to. But if it is such a significant amount, like 140,000, uh, would we be in a position to potentially help restaurants that might need to financial help putting out equipment? Like if they need to replace tables or umbrellas or that kind of stuff. So the escrow uh, reads pretty specifically for barriers. For I don't think it reads for outdoor dining. I'll double check. That's really going to be a question for our finance team. Oh, okay. way, how we can use that that money now. If you so elect, you could always repurpose that escrow for a broader category. Um, but I'm just pointing out that I don't know if we'll be able to do that without an act of the. Of the board of aldermen. Uh-huh. Uh, can I? Yeah. I can say, uh, alderman Clemens, please. I think you're going the same direction I am. Go ahead. Well, what I was going to say is, you know, we we may want to. We what I would I don't. Do you already have um, Director Cummings? Do you already have a contract in to put these out? In uh, no. Uh, uh, we have quotes for putting the barriers out. Yeah, so what I was wondering was, I'm wondering if we can, um, if it was possible to get a quote um, for this year and next oh. and, and sort of lock in a price, because if, if we could do that and save some costs now, we could put, we could escrow that money forward for next year um, because we're going to run into the same thing, obviously. Um so, you know, just thinking ahead that if, if one of these companies is willing to, to lock in a, a price for this year and next with a no, you know, a no exit, you know, whatever, like if we don't do it, whatever, um, no penalty exit clause for us, we might want to think about doing that because then we can save some money, plan for the future with the 200000 that we have now or whatever's left over, put that aside and not have to worry about next year, because obviously we're, we're going to be facing some really tough budget seasons this year and next. So it might be prudent for us to do something like that. Great. It's a great point. Uh, you know, I see Dan Hudson's on here. He's the one that's closest to this issue. He might be able to speak and I don't want to put him on the spot per se, but he might be able to speak to that a little bit better than I could. Yeah, that's something that we can uh, certainly uh, talk to talk to the company about. Uh, we intend to use the same company we did last year. Um, they're very familiar with the, with the whole setup and and uh, you know know how to plan for it now perfectly. So, uh, but we can we can certainly talk to them about that and see if we can extend a quote for uh, next year. That that would be great. And um, yeah, if you can if if you can do that, that'd be awesome. And just you know let us know and. And maybe that's something that, you know, this committee can think about as, as a plan forward, because again, coming up with money to do things like this in the future is going to be tough. And I would recommend that we, if, if we have a big lump sum like that, and this is something we want to do next year, that we, we put aside for it now. And so, so, so Alderman Clemens, you raise a really good point. And actually, so this is a, this is a question, uh, I, the way the legislation is going to read is for this year, would it make sense for us to authorize for it to be for the following year as well? 
And I've started out my comments this night by saying I'm looking for direction as to whether we're going to be doing this for two, three years. This goes to your point and it goes for good planning. It would help us immensely if we knew we could set expectations. We could, you know, let people know that this is our two to five year plan or whatever it may be that you, you would be doing this. So can I points well taken. Can I ask a follow up to that? Follow up, Mr. Clemens, yes. So Director Cummings and I had a conversation um, about the parking revenue, which was down this year. And so it's, it, and it's related to the barriers because obviously we're taking away parking spots. So, but my question was, I had asked if we could put into the parking study um, what it would cost the city in revenue um, if we could get that into the parking study, is that, have you done that director Cummings or is that something yeah. you plan to do? Yep. That's going to be in the scope. Cause my personal opinion is I would certainly support to do this this year and next um, with the caveat that, you know, it's being studied and um, we'll have some answers between now and next year. Um, of which, of which, what, how to do it beyond next year. Um, and if there's things that we have to tweak or, or whatever the case may be. Um, but that would, I would certainly support that. Mr. Chairman? Yes, uh, Alderman Dow. Yeah, I, I think it's very prudent to go ahead with a two or three year plan. Uh, you know, doing this every year over and over and over again doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, let's do a say a three-year plan this year and a couple more years it can be tweaked later on but at least you'll have the basics of what we're doing i uh, really appreciate I, this i agree with that because we did this let, the nexus of this was because of the covid and to help out the downtown and i pray to my lord that with the vaccines coming out and everything else that we'll get beyond this that we don't lose another valuable citizen in the city to this terrible pandemic. So when we get on the bright side, we may have to uh, look at this again. And I think three years is a prudent short term. It's long enough to go with it, but yet it's short enough that we can reevaluate because who knows what the world would look COVID three, three years from now. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's something definitely to discuss. Uh, Alderman Schmidt. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I heard a lot of great uh, comments about what we did downtown. I heard a lot of people say that slowing traffic down and people coming out, the, the whole community felt, felt connected, felt connected and were part of it. And that's, that's something unusual for Nashua. And it's a wonderful thing. Not only that, we watch cities around the country decide that Nashua did the right thing <clears throat> and they joined us. And what we're finding is that the cities, the downtown, they're becoming more attractive. And this is really a great idea. And as far as traffic, if it can go around downtown, that's fine. I think that it's what we want to do is create that walkable, that, that community feeling down there. So, yeah, three years, as long as we possibly can, I think we should extend this. Thank you. Now, uh, Director Cummings, can I play the devil's advocate here? if I may. Uh, yes. Alderman Clemens did bring up the point. Uh, I'm all in favor of the barriers. I don't want anybody to say that I'm not. And the outdoor down, dining, I agree with Alderman Schmidt. I've heard a lot of very positive feedback on it. But however, we are losing parking spaces. And after a certain dollar amount, that uh, money goes to uh, the downtown improvement. And have we at least spied something? Do we have something in the closet that we could drag out to look at uh, uh, for the revenue of this. Uh, Cause I think the good people of the city would be disappointed if we didn't have uh, the holiday stroll. Right. For example. Uh, yeah. So can we anticipate that and try to do an economic equally as well? Yes. This? Yes. So that's this, uh, this is exactly the conversation that Alderman Clemens and I had. Uh, is making sure we have an economic forecast of our revenue and and uh, and our expenditures and do some modeling to see so we have a comfort level and confidence if we're going to do the barriers what's that what's that potential revenue 
picture look like? You know, so what I'm going to say to that is, is that right now, what I know is that we have enough parking capacity. We have enough parking spaces. The most valuable and the most sought after parking spaces are Main Street parking spaces because it's about convenience. So the people, so if I think of this as non-COVID times, so all, all we're doing is redirecting people to not necessarily park on Main Street. They're still coming to Main Street, but now they're parking behind the buildings and we're forcing them to walk out to Main Street and down Main Street. And that is what one, what we want to do, because you want to create walk, you know, walking activity. But then the second part of it is, do we maybe shift the pricing of what we're charging Main Street, if we're not going to be having really parking on Main Street anymore, to the back lots? And so you'll be made whole, essentially, because you're driving the same cars there. You're just not necessarily charging them, because the real value is is, is the convenience of, of the main street. So yes, we are, we are going to study it. Your point is well taken and, and I will be continuing to, to look at it further. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Alderman Clemens. Yeah. And I do have legislation that I am working on uh, that has the support of the mayor and, and, um, and I did, um, I did speak to you and Alderman will share about it uh, briefly um, which and Director Cummings, which is basically a temporary funding plan uh, for the Downtown Improvement Committee um, as a COVID relief measure, um, not for this fiscal year, but for next fiscal year to make sure that they have money going into their account. That legislation is being worked on and it will, and so I don't want to, I don't have the nitty gritty details, but um, but that's hopefully going to be coming forward in, in February. So um, I will keep you all uh, posted on, on that. And um, I'm very excited. Thank you, Alderman Clemens. Very excited to hear that. And if you need any help with that, I'd be willing to help you as well. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, uh, Mr. Jim, and I mean, I've essentially covered all the points I wanted to cover this evening. I wanted to make sure I got this conversation out there. Uh, I'm going to do uh, another community type conversation in the next week or two um, to continue that. So please be, uh, be on the lookout for, for a similar type conversation that we had back late last fall with uh, some of the downtown stakeholders, make them aware of all the various things that are, that are happening. Um, but we'll be looking to file legislation for the February 3rd meeting to kind of get the ball rolling. So we make that March 15th bogey. All right. Well, very good. Sounds like we're wrapping up. Is there any other further questions from uh, members of the committee? Alderman Lopez. Could Director Cummings stay for my next conversation piece? Is that sure. yeah. Yeah. Barry, yeah. technically a question? So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, happy to. Um, anybody else? Okay. Uh, also here, uh, to give equal time, I know, uh, Director Hudson, you are here uh, for a different matter, but uh, is, you've been very patient. Uh, do you want to chime in on anything of uh, things we discussed so far? Thank, thank you for the uh, opportunity. No, I, I, I really came tonight to uh, answer any questions about the proposed stop signs, if there were any. Uh, this... this uh, uh, barrier discussion, outdoor dining was a was an added treat. So I'm glad I for for that reason anyway. So um, I'm really here just to uh, be available if you have any questions about that. Well, thank you, Mr. Hudson. Uh, this is the infrastructure committee. We open up and we converse ideas, and this is a great format. So thank you for that, uh, Director Cummings. I thank you very much for coming this evening. Uh, you are more than welcome any particular time to come in and get the information out to the people uh, such as this. And uh, uh, I think this is a very good. And thank you for going March 15th. For, I am very attached to March 17th. So <laughs> anything that could help out uh, my good friends uh, on March 17th, I think that would be uh, brilliant, as we say. And uh, 
<laughs> look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman O'Brien? Lopez, yes. Uh, it occurs to me that rather than holding Director Cummings hostage when he's trying to put his son to bed, um, my no. conversation piece is very brief. I just wanted a quick update on the, the parking. Please go, Alderman Lopez. Yes. Hey, 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 if I may, can I just, just say I am in no rush. My son's already to bed. So, no, I'm here. So, please go with your agenda. We can do it at the at the end if you'd okay. like. All right. That's okay, Alderman Lopez. We, we yeah, can, um, I just figured for efficiency's sake. Okay, but, yeah, we, well, maybe we could free up Mr. Hudson then. Who might, yeah, who exactly. might want to go to bed himself? Yes, okay. <laughs> All right, then. Very oh, good. Man. All right, again, thank you, Director Cummings. All right, uh, turn to my clerk. Uh, communications. We have none. Unfinished business. Also none. New business resolutions. Look at that. We have none. All right. New <laughs> business ordinances. We have ordinance 20-043 as amended, uh, authorizing a stop sign on Dartmouth Street at its intersection with Douglas Street and stop signs on Hill Street at its intersection with Dartmouth Street. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to amend by replacing ordinance 20-043 with the changes made by attorney clerk by roll call. Very good. Uh, Alderman Klee, would you like to speak to this uh, amendment? You're on mute. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, uh, I, I have it on mute when I need to speak and I don't have it on mute when I don't want people to hear. Um, I, when I originally put this through, it was on uh, behest of the uh, Public Works Department, they had called and asked me to put it through. Um, at that time, I really wasn't thinking this is truly Ward 2, so it would have fallen under Alderman Dodd, but I had uh, moved forward at that point and I, and I have brought him into the, the conversation and so on. It, it borders my, um, my ward as it, as it crosses um, Cushing. So the, uh, the crux of the matter was when they, they had called and said there was a safety concern and safety issues and wanted to put in these stop signs at Dartmouth and Douglas and Dartmouth and Hill. Um, since then, they put in some temporary, and I think Mr. Hudson could probably speak to that too. They put in some temporary um, stop signs. There was a little bit of um, pushback and kind of some angst about the one at Dartmouth and Douglas as that particular intersection, literally Dartmouth comes into Douglas and it, and it tees. So they felt that it wasn't really necessary for them to have to have a stop sign um, there and that it wasn't quite as traffic. So I have since spoken to Public Works and they have pulled back the request of um, Dartmouth and Douglas um, in possibly reserving it for future. But at this point, the real concern is the Dartmouth and Hill. I'm hoping that I have all this right. Um, Dartmouth and Hill is the biggest concern that they're having at this point. So right now, we really want to go forward with Dartmouth and Hill um, as it's be it's been kind of known as a, a dangerous. And, a, and if Mr. Hudson would speak to that, I would really appreciate that. All right. I would like to give first opportunity to your co-sponsor, Alderman Dowd. Uh, I'll give you equal time if you want to. Yeah, I, I, uh, I had some phone calls and I agree with the changes and, and uh, had coordinated with uh, Alderman Clee and uh, and if, if the Department of Public Works is doesn't think we ought to put that other sign up because of the concerns of the people that live there I'm fine with it very good uh, Mr. Hudson would you like to speak uh, to this amended yes sure we uh, we support the amendment um, as as noted uh, the primary concern was Dartmouth at Hill. Um, in looking at it, we, we noticed that uh, maybe a stop sign could put, be put up at the end of the street too. So we did put those temporary signs out. We received the uh, feedback. It really wasn't necessary up there because of the low volume and it's a T intersection. And um, so it's, it's fairly obvious you need to stop there anyway. Um, so we, uh, we, we concur with that. Um, it seems that that's unnecessary and the primary uh, issue uh, that will still be addressed by the amended legislation is to uh, put stop signs um, at Dartmouth and Hill, which is a four-way intersection without, you know, minor street approach having stop signs. So it's certainly warranted there and we support that. Very good. Uh, this 
ordinance has been properly introduced. I'll open it up to questions by members of the committee or any other alderman. Are there any questions? Alderman O'Brien. Alderman Dowd. Yeah, um, sort of a sidelight to the this particular stop sign conversation, but I've had several calls over the years, uh, last couple of years especially, of the traffic around St. Christopher's School, which is right in that area. And people come off of Cushing and they go up and they drop their kids off and a lot of them go straight up that street. That street is very narrow. And a lot of the people thought they should be parking on only one side because if you park two cars, one on either side, you have, nobody can get through the middle. It's too narrow. And other people have thought that it should be one way. Uh, I, I just want to say that I think at some point, if you have an opportunity and nothing on your plate at the time, you could take a ride up there and take a look at it, particularly when school's getting out, uh, if you want to get stuck in traffic. But <laughs> All right. Thank, uh, you. thank you, Alderman Dowd. Any uh, further questions or comments from any alderman on the amendment? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? On And this is for the amendment. Right. Uh, let's see, Alderman O'Brien? Yes. Alderman Lopez? Yes. Alderman Schwitz votes yes. Alderman Jetty? Yes. And Alderman Tensa? Yes. That would be five yeas, zero nays. Uh, motion carries. Uh, now, Madam Clerk, I am going to look for a motion of 020-43 as a, uh, with a recommendation. Could you give that to me, please? Uh, as amended by replacing um, yes, we voted 020-43 with the changes made by Attorney Clark by roll call. Okay. And uh, this is for... Uh, the amendment we just voted on replaces the original bill, and this is the, the uh, original ordinance, so this is the one that we're voting on. So thank you to the clerk. And the motion before us is for final passage. Uh, any additional comment from members of the committee? Alderman Jetty. Yeah, I just, uh, for clarification, we're, uh, is this going to end up being a, a four-way stop or just a two-way? And where are the stop signs going to end up being? Two. I'll let the sponsor, Alderman Clay, do you want to take this one? I, I think I'd like to defer to um, Mr. Hudson. All he right. can explain a little bit better, yes. Nice out. Okay, Mr. Hudson, you're on the hot seat. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so stop signs will be added to Hill. It won't be a four-way uh, stop. It is a four-way intersection, but you'll have to stop on the Hill approaches. Uh, you will not have to stop on the Dartmouth uh, approaches. Thank you. Any uh, further questions or comment? Very good. Will the clerk please call the roll of 0-20-43 as amended? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Schmidt votes yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. And Alderman Tensa. Yes. Five yeas and no, no nays. Motion carries. Uh, Nobody has brought to my attention the items that have been tabled as therefore we shall leave them as such. Uh, general discussion, would this be the proper time, Alderman Lopez, that uh, yeah. you would like to have your comments with uh, Director Cummings? Uh, yeah, I'd want to just an update on how the participation in the parking um, videos have been going. I know you've had several town halls so far and ours is next Tuesday, I believe. Yes, if I may, Mr. Chair. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, again, Tim Cummings, uh, Director of Economic Development for the record. Um, Alderman Lopez, the participation has not been uh, overwhelming to say the least. Um, we've done three wards, wards nine, eight, and seven thus far. Um, we had a handful of participants in each ward um, with Ward 7 having the most participants, but again, that was still, you know, no more than, than, than a handful. Um, uh, we will continue to do uh, these ward meeting outreach conversations. Uh, we have one tomorrow night with uh, Ward 6, I believe. Uh, and um, 
we we hope to have uh, a report back by the end of February type time frame. Um, and then, you know, it'll be up to, to the Board of Aldermen to, to pursue whatever recommendations or comments that come out of that report. Uh, happy to answer any questions that you, that that any you or anyone else may have, but does that does that answer your question? Uh, basically, I had gotten at least one person who is a former constituent who said that the link didn't work for her. Um, I did verify with a different meeting that it works, and it's the same link for all of them, if I am correct. Um, yep. It's on. Uh, is it on the website under parking? I think it is. Thing like that. It is. There's a yep, exactly, and it's scrolling on cable access all the time. We put it up on Facebook. We have asked folks to put it out to their networks. Um, you know, we have we have done uh, you know uh, our part to try to promote and get get the word out. Um, yeah, I I mean I would imagine some wards are more interested in it than others. Well, that's exactly right, uh, Alderman Lopez. Uh, I think it's safe to say that wards nine and eight, this isn't as strong of an issue. Ward seven, there was a little bit more of an interest, but. I'll still say even in Ward 7, um, you know, there, there was not an overwhelming outcry for on-street overnight parking. Like um, I thought maybe I would see in Ward 7 um, and, and, you know, same with Wards 9 and 8. They all followed suit. Okay. That was my question. Thank you. And uh, after I could only attend to one, but uh, I don't be discouraged. I don't think anybody is, but I think when we get into the crux, uh, I, I'm in Ward 9. It's like a prairie out there to park. It's not really so much as an issue, but I think when you get to wards in the example three and four as the example, I think you're going to have a lot more in participation on that. So looking yes. forward to hearing from the public. So pass, please uh, pass the word on to your constituents. Uh, this is their opportunity to uh, have this type of format and speak about it to assist us as we march on in the future to make these very important decisions. So very good. Thank you. Uh, anybody else question to Director Cummings? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to public comment. Is any member of the public which would like to be heard? Seeing none, remarks from Alderman. I like you guys, outstanding, very good. Uh, there's no reason for no uh, non-public session. So therefore I'm gonna look to, uh, look to my clerk to make a motion, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that the Committee on Infrastructure of January 27th, 2021 be adjourned by roll call. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. so it's yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. And Alderman Tenza. Yes. Five yeas and zero nays. Motion carries and I'll declare the uh, Committee of Infrastructure meeting adjourned at 8.23. And uh, thank you to our guests who have shown up again. So thank you very much. Good night, all. Night.